So yeah, today, again, I'll be presenting on another topic, which is seismic performance of an innovative concrete pier reinforced with titanium alloy bars. This is the cast-in-place concrete. So I'll be talking a little bit about titanium alloy bars, provide you a background, and again, talk about the cantilever pier reinforced with first with normal steel rebar, and then uh, compare with the titanium alloy bars. So let's look at the background a little bit. So ASC infrastructure report card, uh, comparing 17 versus 2021. So there were about 614,000 plus bridges in United States in 2017. We jumped to 617,000 bridges in 2021. So in 2017, there were about 40% which were 50, 50 years and older. And then 9.1% were uh, structurally deficient. And 39% uh, of those were already past the service life. And then in 2021, so 42% of the bridges are 50 years or older. And, but the reduction of deficient bridges for past two years has slowed down 0.1% annually. And the number of breezes slipping from good to fair condition is increasing annually. So the main problem there was uh, corrosion. So we thought of coming up with the breeze pair that's gonna be less corrosion, that gonna eliminate that problem, basically. So I guess I already talked about this, about the grade five titanium alloy bars. So we'll be using TI6L4V, which is grade five. And same thing again, uh, Texas DOT and Oregon DOT using the titanium alloy bars for uh, retrofitting uh, breeze girders. And so, okay, this is, so talking about prototype structure. So we, our structural laboratory located at Idaho. So we took the typical breeze, uh, breeze column that is located in Idaho. It's about four foot diameter and then 32 feet breeze, and then we scaled it down to uh, one third uh, to accommodate the structural laboratory that we have. So we came down to one foot six inch and then the overall height 10 foot six inch. So this is first, I'll be talking about the casting place pier reinforced with normal rebar. So with the, our design uh, moment capacity was about 150 kit foot. And then uh, our uh, overall diameter was uh, diameter of the pier was 18 inches, which is an octagonal column. And then longitudinal reinforcing used was 12 number six with the spiral of uh, 1.5 inch. With the, and then number three spiral was used. And then this little, so let me show there. So this little shaft that you see here, up in shaft, those are to uh, attach the actuator to push and pull basically. And this is the detail for the uh, footing. So moment capacity was thousand kip foot. This was relatively very high. Uh, we designed it intentionally very high to uh, let the column reach ultimate before even the footing yields so that we can use the footing for different purpose. And then the dimension was four feet by four feet by three foot with two inches cover. And then those little circles that you see are hollow steel pipes to uh, thread the, uh, to post tension the uh, column to the strong floor. So this is the uh, test setup that was used uh, to test the columns. So there you can see the specimen and then uh, also the uh, servo bulb actuator that you can see the, those are attached against the reaction frame and then the reaction frame is attached to the strong floor and then also footing is anchored to the strong floor like I mentioned before and then there is also the uh, hydraulic ram used to simulate the gravity load and then they are tied to the strong floor using the high strength rods to simulate again the gravity load. So and this is the construction part. So first, uh, the footing case was built, and then footing was uh, footing was poured first, and then after it's cured, 
it's transported inside the structural laboratory where uh, we can carry out the testing and all, and then we build up the uh, build up, uh, and then we poured the actual pier. Uh, because after uh, what, if we pour everything outside, it won't be easy to carry it inside. Depending on the because of the limitation of our structural laboratory carrying and everything, so there at the end you can see the specimen that was created, and then this is basically the all the instrumentation and stuff. We measured all the uh, footing movements and then uh, displacement of the yeah, displacement of the column and then shear deformations and everything. And uh, this is the typical uh, the loading protocol that, that's used for the static testing or uh, the testing of the cantilever piers. And then loading rate was one millimeter per second that we used. And this is the testing for the, for the cast in place pier reinforced with normal rebar there you can see and the very very first push pulls are for a very first drift the crack started to appear and then as the drift continued the crack moved up in the column uh, the typical failure was uh, by forming the plastic ends at the bottom of the column Okay, and this is the close-up or uh, close-up view of the different drift close and close-up view of the cast-in-place uh, pier reinforced with normal rebar at different drift ratio, and then you can also see the bar rupture at different drift ratios. We stop the test after rupturing three bars. Okay, and this is the hysteresis. Uh, for the pier reinforced with normal rebar. And then those little kinks that you see, those are the rupture of the bar. And then it has comparatively a little bit fatter loop. And then the maximum, uh, maximum base here that we were able to achieve was about 32 or 35 uh, keep with a displacement of, uh, of about uh, seven and a half or so uh, inches. And then the first plot that you see here is the residual drift versus the uh, drift. Uh, residual drift is basically how much the uh, column is, our column of pier is tilting after its drift ratio. And then as you can see uh, at the very end, there was about six and a half uh, percent of residual drift at the End of the testing, and then also the energy uh, energy plot at the the other plot is the energy plot. So first loop of cycle has more dissipated energy as expected than the second loop of energy, and then the maximum cumulative energy was about 450 kilojoule. And this is again for the. Uh, casting base pier reinforced with norm uh, titanium alloy bars again same uh, uh, design moment capacity exactly same pier but just the longitudinal reinforcing is reduced to seven number uh, six smooth rebar instead of 12 number six before so and then uh, another thing is we use spiral number three spiral with three inch of pitch and this uh, again exactly same thing uh, no difference on the column uh, i mean footing details and then test setup exactly same thing no change on the detailings so uh, this is the construction of the uh, pier so there you can see we've used the uh, plastic ties instead of using the normal ties so uh, because we tried to avoid the touching of uh, titanium alloy bars to the normal steel to avoid the galvanic corrosion because of that appears because of uh, two metals touching each other. So we tried to avoid that as much as possible. Uh, and so we have also used the plastic chairs and uh, 
space spacers again to do so and uh, again exactly same thing first uh, uh, footing is poured and then transport is inside and then the uh, pair is pair and cap is poured this is again the uh, instrumentation exactly same thing no change in the instrumentation as well and again for the loading protocol exactly same no change in the loading protocol as well this is the testing so as you can see on the very first push pull cycle you can see the crack appearing at the base of the base of the column uh, so as you uh, push pull there is very less cracks developing instead of having the cracks everywhere on the peer reinforced with normal rebar And also another thing is, is the drift cycle moves on because the smooth titanium alloy bars were used. So there was the bar slip uh, seen on the, uh, seen from that gap. And then another thing was the longitudinal rebars were trying to push out of the, push out, but those spirals were not letting it come out because the spirals were also titanium alloy bars. Also, you can notice that there are not a whole bunch of cracks there. So there you can see the even that might have even buckled the spirals. So yeah, that is the failure right there. Okay, and this is the uh, closer view of the pair reinforced with titanium alloy bars. You can see the uh, the buckling of the buckling or uh, the longitudinal rebar trying to push out the spirals on the that middle figure that you can see, and at the end there you can see the failure on the uh, titanium alloy bars. And this is the hysteresis loop. And again, the kink, a little bit kink that you see is the rupture of the bar. And then we were only about, about uh, 20 or slightly more than 20 uh, kip, but we were able to go to the higher uh, drift ratios. And then this is the residual drift versus the Drift again. The we're able to reach very high residual uh, uh, residual drift. Again, uh, very less tilting of the structure, and then uh, energy dissipation. We're able to reach the lesser energy dissipation, uh, lesser uh, dissipated energy, but but we're able to go to higher drift cycles. So this is the uh, side to side comparison. There you can see we are not able to exactly uh, match the match the base here, but the main thing that we thought would be uh, that could be because of the uh, bar slip because we use the smooth rebar, and then uh, definitely there is the pinch hysteresis on the uh, uh, on the pair reinforced with titanium alloy bars rather than the pattern loop that is which is why there is the less energy dissipation on the Peer reinforced with titanium alloy bars. And then this is the energy plot comparison. Again, same thing. We're not able to uh, reach the higher energy dissipation, but we're able to push the push to the drift cycles. Um, I mean, more drift cycles. And then there is the uh, uh, residual drift comparison, which I uh, talked about. So in conclusion, uh, a cantilever peer reinforced with uh, uh, titanium alloy bars was proposed, and then the system aimed to achieve the better seismic performance and then the durability. So, and the advantages such as better ductility, uh, better fatigue performance, 
and definitely the excellent corrosion resistance were achieved from the peer reinforced with titanium alloy bars. And then uh, the unidirectional quasi static cyclic test were uh, performed to validate the concept. And then uh, definitely I talked about uh, the reduced number of rebars that were achieved and which can also reduce the labor cost. So the displacement at yield was about, uh, uh, a yield and ultimate is higher compared to the uh, steel, re uh, steel pier. However, the base here, uh, it yield and uh, ultimate both is lower on the pier reinforced with titanium alloy bars. And then the overstrength factor and ultimate ductility for the pier reinforced with titanium alloy bars were 1.32 and 8.52. So, and for the, and this could be due to the elastically plastic, uh, elastic perfectly plastic behavior of titanium alloy bars. And then uh, also less energy dissipation for the pier uh, reinforced with TIABs, but uh, more ductile and then more ductile compared to the equivalent cast in place pier reinforced with normal rebar. And then, so also the most important thing was the less residual displacement of the pier reinforced with titanium alloy bars after yielding, which was about 40% less. That means need uh, less repair, repair. And then, like I said before, even on, on the very first push pull, one crack occurred at the base of the bottom, and then there was no uh, crack spreading throughout the column. So even if you have to repair after, the, after any seismic event, you can just repair very few cracks. And then the structure is not tilted too much. So based on the testing results, again, it has a lot of potential for civil infrastructures, but definitely this is something new. And then this needs a lot of research and uh, development to bring it into practice. Again, I'd like to thank uh, these companies for helping us out in our research and also i'd like to thank my advisor dr mustafa mashal for providing me opportunity to work with him and then be here today and thank you everyone for listening to me